Well, hello, fellow overclockers, and welcome to uh, my video on the performance test of my recent rig build featuring the components you see in front of you. Um, in this uh, video, we're going to show the uh, overclocking uh, potential of this particular chipset, the 2600K, which is right there, i7 2600K. And in particular, the motherboard, uh, the P67 UD5 B3 revision, which is just you know fairly new, a few weeks old. Importantly, also is that uh, Zalman cooler, the 9900 Max, which is really performing well, as I'll show. And I'll be running some benchmarks with the Unigen Heaven um, with a slight overclock on the 580. The GTX 580 doesn't really need too much. It's, it's pretty powerful already. In my mind. Um, of course the Vengeance 1600 um, 88824 8 gigs, 2 sticks of Corsair RAM and all important power supply 70 amps on the 12 volt rail for the AX850 Corsair all going in a Corsair 600T case. Um, so uh, over we go to the monitor here and hopefully you can see this uh, fairly well but more or less I've been running Prime 95 for a little over an hour at 4.4 gigahertz overclock. So that's a multiplier of 44. Um, didn't touch the base clock at all, left it at 100. The core in the BIOS, V core in the BIOS was 1.34 uh, set, and I turned off the turbo. And um, I basically followed a lot of the guidance that uh, the Australian guy did for overclocking the UD5 and you can find that on YouTube. Um, I didn't push it quite as hard as he. Probably you could get higher 4.5, 4.6, maybe even 4.8. But you know what, for me as a gamer there's not a lot of difference between um, 4.4, 4.6 or 7 or 4.5 whatever uh, in terms of frame rate because to, to me getting a gigahertz over the base clock of 3.4 for this chip to 4.4 is pretty good. And, um, you know, that's that's pretty good for me. So, yeah, as I said, it's been running for a little over an hour. I started it at, you know, 12.30. It's now 1.34. So it's a little over an hour. And really, you should run this longer, Prime 95 longer. But the idea here is to just give you an idea of temperatures um, in the case and in the on the CPU, as well as stability. You know, you should run this for 8 to 12, really, hours. Uh, but I'm using the blend test, which is one of the more stressful tests here. And I like to use hard uh, hardware monitor as my guide. Um, and just to show you that the core temps uh, right now, you know, 53, 52, but the maximum temps after an hour uh, using the Zalman cooler, which is running probably at max 1500 RPM, is about 56 degrees maximum in one of the cores. So 55, constantly core zero seems to be cooler than all the others. That might be a function of my paste. But you know, nonetheless, that's very cool on Prime 95. That, that You're gonna run a, cooler than that when you're in real world scenarios with games and so forth. Uh, hardware monitor doesn't recognize the um, CPU uh, voltage very well. Um, I think it, I have uh, the easy tune utility that comes with the um, motherboard and uh, it's the the voltage is actually and I'll probably show that in the next video but it the voltage is really more like 1.296 um, the fan speed is it says 21 rpm there for the CPU fan but it's really running at 1500 at the maximum right now uh, it does go to 1700 but I have the um, the resistor in place and you know what, this fan is very quiet. Um, I don't think, you know, as a gamer you won't hear this. And it's not obtrusive at all. It's a very, very quiet fan. I don't have my box right beside me. You know, it's not right beside my head. It's under my desk, a little bit to the right. So I don't hear this uh, system at all. It's a um, very quiet fan in my mind. Uh, CPU Z, so yeah, there you go, 4.4 roughly. Um, and um, voltage is not correct there, so don't worry about that. So that's you know just a basic uh, showing the performance um, at 4.4 of this uh, setup, which is really good. I mean that those temperatures are are low. 
And uh, next, uh, I'll show the performance of going from 3.4 base clock with the Unigen 2.1 Heaven benchmark and versus the 4.4 overclock uh, Unigen Heaven benchmark uh, DX11 four times AA um, normal tessellation. So uh, we'll do that, we'll run that, I'll stop this and uh, we'll set that up and start shooting again. And this is really a good test of, um, of, te of your video uh, frame rate for DX11 games. Uh, I also leave hardware monitor running to show some temperatures at the end of that as well. Hi, back again. Uh, I thought I would just show EasyTune 6 r report on the CPU voltage uh, at the 4.4 overclock with Prime running. Uh, it's actually reporting, you know, about 1.22. I think I said 1.29, but it's. I think that was when I was using an even higher overclock. Uh, but it's really 1.22, and um, DRAM is 1.548. I didn't touch the voltage for my Corsair RAM. I, I think these ones are particularly sensitive to volt overvolting, so I just left them on auto in the BIOS, and things seem to be okay. Um, just to show that the temperature, at least from EasyTune 6, shows around 43, a little lower. I think that's the CPU core temp. I'm not absolutely certain, though. It says 43. That might be the CPU um, outside uh, the, the chipset, actually. So I'm not sure. But the fan speed uh, on the Zalman is actually only a 1388, not 1500, which is the max. So that's not even running at full power, and it's cooling quite well. So, yeah, this is a nice thing to use. Um, if you want to uh, to uh, further tweak your your system uh, on voltage, there is I think there's an advanced setting here somewhere, but I can't remember where it is to get at the voltage things. Uh, yeah, here voltage. You can dial back your um, voltage on your cores if you want. See, remember I said I 1.34 in the BIOS, and it's you know right there. You can dial that back from here and and see whether your Prime 95 is actually functioning, will crash on you or have errors. So I, I'm going to leave it. I think I'm pretty happy with that for now. So uh, we'll run to some benchmarks with Unigen next. Okay, so we're back after running the Unigen benchmark. Um, here's the settings. DX11, uh, stereo 3D disabled, shaders high, tessellation normal, anastropy 16 times, AA, anti-aliasing, four times, full screen, 1920 by 1200. Uh, again, CPU at 4.4, um, the 2600K. Um, just to show you what my profile is for overclocking of the uh, uh, graphics card, the GTX 580. I don't do too much on that, 825. Um, don't, the shader clock is linked. And fan speed, I do put the fan speed up just to keep the temperatures down because as you'll see even with the bench with the um, uh, running the Unigen benchmark, if you look over here, the temperatures on the NVIDIA maximum temperatures still get up to around so actually that might sorry that might be an old I didn't clear the uh, maximum temperature so it looks like maybe the temperatures didn't get that high in, on the card hmm. I'm going to have to double check that. Anyway, uh, I do put it up. It's rather noisy at 70, um, but you can be assured that you won't uh, damage your card with that kind of speed. You can play with that fan speed and find whatever's happy for you and temperatures um, that make you happy and uh, accommodating. So here's the interesting thing, though. So here's the score of the FPS, given those uh, with the Unigen 2.1 Heaven benchmark given that uh, setup I just mentioned for hev the Heaven benchmark at 4.4 the CPU now it says 3.4 that's just the base clock 6400 build um, now so what we're getting is um, uh, about you know about 48 with a minimum FPS of 22.1 and a maximum of about 96 now if we switch to the uh, the other, the uh, second, the actually this one, I go back. That one is at the overclocked 4.4, uh, minimum FPS of 22, maximum FPS of 96, 48, call it. And if we slip to the stock run, 
it's basically the same score. I mean, maybe one frame difference. Uh, minimum FPS is lower, maximum is the same. I think that's actually a result of a bit of stutter in, in the benchmark when it was going into the dark passage and may not really reflect the minimum FPS actually. So to me, the bottom line is that between these two things, overclocking the CPU here for this particular benchmark and perhaps some DX11 games may not help that much in the end. Uh, maybe some games will be more CPU intensive than the Heaven benchmark, but what it does tell you for the Heaven benchmark, uh, that this is a GPU intensive um, application and that the overclocking your card higher or, or not is really going to dictate your frame rate. I mean, this is a very good frame rate, 48 frames per second, given that I have 16 times AF and 4 times AA and DX11 with tessellations at normal. So I think that's not bad. I mean, it's, it's showing really no difference with the overclocking. Um, it's really a factor of the card. Anyway, that's just an interesting bit of information for y'all, and hope you enjoyed. One thing I did forget to mention, however, was the temperature of the core, the 2600 K core never got above 40 um, during that heaven benchmark. So that might be typical of uh, 3D gaming applications um, with the Zalman cooler. So 40 degrees is pretty cold. Um, yeah, so no worries there. Just to give you a little bit more clarity on that. And finally, one last remark. This is the result of the Unigen Heaven benchmark with the same settings as I just did for the uh, 2600K, but with my former Core Duo, um, my Q6600 quad core at 3.4 gigahertz uh, overclock, with the same graphics card and Corsair Dominator 1066 RAM, and a P35C gigabyte motherboard. Uh, uh, DSR3, DS3R motherboard, I think. Same settings, exactly. Four times AA, 16 times anastropy. Um, so you can see that there's only about four frames difference in uh, the actual score. Of course, the min frames is lower and the max frames is not quite as high, but the average is four frames difference. So what does this all mean? Well, in my mind, it means that if you have an older uh, a Q6600 or a quad core from, from Cordua era, but you don't have a powerful video card, um, before thinking about getting a Sandy Bridge build, you might want to make sure you get a powerful video card as well. Because really, some of these games we're playing now, such as Metro uh, 233, Crisis 2, and, and other games, um, really are pretty GPU intensive so that's probably where your bottleneck will be rather than your CPU at first so just a suggestion to get a good video card um, you know in the um, new NVIDIA lines 570, 560, 570, 580 or the uh, ATI lines the 6900s and things like that so um, yeah that's it bye